So I'm David Duvino, and I'm going to tell you about a new eval suite that uh, the team I was working with at Anthropic just developed. And this all showed up in a new paper about a week ago. So our goal is, for the purposes of responsible scaling policies, to somehow make the case that a model is not going to be dangerous under a wide variety of conditions. And this is a really hard claim to support. The current sort of state of the art or standard practice is we're going to make dangerous capability evals, and we're going to have some particular tasks, such as from this paper from DeepMind, convince a human to give $20 to charity, or maybe classify whether code contains some sort of vulnerability, um, or like implement an agent scaffold, and use the evidence from the model's ability or inability to do these tasks to make broader claims about like, okay, now it's safe to deploy this model. However, it's really hard to make a convincing case that a model can't do something based on a few examples. Um, so it's really easy to make a uh, task such that if the model could do it, you would be like, wow, that's really scary. Just guess my password from looking at me or something like that. But of course, someone's inability to do that doesn't mean that they're not dangerous. Um, so we need to somehow find a suite of tasks that would be, give us comprehensive evidence about the model's inability to do a whole bunch of different attacks, which you know, sounds like a really tall order. Um, the other problem with this standard approach of having these narrow tasks, like convince someone to give to charity, is that they can be either like basically trivial or impossible depending on the setup. So for instance, you know, one of their other tasks was try to mislead people into thinking, believing wrong facts. And of course, this can be very easy if the person doesn't really care or they just put a lot of trust in the model and don't really know what's going on or they're a novice. And of course, an expert, they might just be very hard to mislead and it's not really clear what the important level of expertise is for like that you'll be having to overcome in a, in a real attack or even like what the hard part of a real attack would be. Um, the other way that this became painful was, okay, once we have these evals and we say, oh yeah, so the model is this good at convincing people to believe lies and that good at like lock picking or whatever, um, how are we gonna set thresholds, right? And saying that like, I don't know, our hacker, our, we're only worried about hacking if the model has like this level of hacking ability plus this level of planning ability plus this level of social engineering ability, like uh, combining these just became really a big mess and we felt like we, we couldn't support these arguments or we, we couldn't defend them. Um, so ultimately after months of churn and uh, iteration, we're presenting this new set of four evaluations, which I don't think fully addresses all of these problems, but it's a step in the, they're a step in the, right, the right direction for a few reasons. So I don't have time to get into all of them, uh, the skills that they try to measure are, one is human decision sabotage, so uh, working with a human to make a decision, can they make the human do the wrong decision without making them too suspicious? Uh, code sabotage, similarly, can a model look like it's helping improve your code base but insert uh, sabotage, or sorry, insert sabotage code? Uh, sandbagging, can it pretend not to have dangerous capabilities? And undermining oversight, so basically, can it be a trust and safety classifier that's deliberately letting some bad behavior go unmonitored? without getting caught. So these are still like toy in some important senses, but I think that they're a step towards more defensible safety cases for a few concrete reasons. So one is that we tried to put them all in relatively realistic settings where there's a person with an actual like non-trivial goal that is being, has an agent that is uh, supporting them. Uh, the other one is that we try to include the mitigations that the model would be facing under a realistic deployment as part of the evaluation. So the human decision sabotage and the code sabotage both have an overseer that is checking the work of the model and trying to decide like, does anything look suspicious? And of course we calibrate this against innocent actions that actually are just helpful because sometimes people think things look suspicious when they actually aren't. Um, so this is taking a page out of Bakshul Garris's sort of control framework is that there should always be some sort of oversight this is something that just naturally happens anyways. Maybe it's overkill to say that this is like its own, like uh, it's part of control, but this is, uh, it's part of that family of approaches. And finally, we tried to make the attack surfaces like as rich as possible so that we don't have to be opinionated about exactly what strategy the models are gonna take to do an attack. Um, so this is like trying to make the code bases large, for instance. Um, this still doesn't tell us exactly how to set thresholds. So for example, here's the results from human sabotage decision uh, and uh, you can see that the models did actually make the people make worse decisions, but the people also found these actions to be somewhat more suspicious. So we still have this problem of how do we connect this to the case that, or the claim that it's going to be safe to deploy this model over the course of a year. Um, and the other question that we kept raising is like, are we even measuring the hard part of the skill? So like Holden Karnofsky is always saying like, no, the hard part of 
pulling off a like large attack is biding your time and not attacking too early. Pull, uh, Evan Hubinger is always saying like stutterfuge and like predicting what's going to look suspicious is like a related skill. Um, being consistent over time. These are all the things we like to measure. So the other thing that I think I'm happy with that we uh, improved was taking these sort of like small scale interactions on the order of like one interaction with the model, and then gathering statistics of those, and then running uh, rollouts on the scale of like hundreds of thousands of interactions in like a year long deployment, and then letting and working backwards to what the thresholds should be from there. Thank you very much. Thank you.